हेलो टीम वेलकम टू माई सेशन ऑन कॉफी विद प्रब एंड टूडे वी गोइंग टू कवर अबाउट डोमेन फाइव आइडेंटिटी एंड एक्सेस मैनेजमेंट ऑफ सी आई एस एस पी एग्जाम समरी हु एम आई माई नेम इज प्रब नायर फॉर मोर इंफॉर्मेशन यू कैन रेफर माई लिंकड इन प्रोफाइल दिस वीडियो विल बी अ यूजफुल फॉर यू इफ यू प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर डोमेन फाइव दिस वीडियो यू मस्ट वॉच बिफोर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर डोमेन फाइव so you have a better visibility about domain 5 what you need to know or what need to be ignore if you new to my youtube channel do subscribe to my youtube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos without wasting a time let's start with the first part in domain 5 identity and access management domain see normally what happen domain 1 talk about governance we talking about operations governance policies and everything in domain 2 we talk about assets and their associate asset security in domain 3 we building a security we be talking about physical security and all that in domain 4 we talking about network with along with the proper technologies but in domain 5 we talk about the controls definitely network has built now we need to define how the subject communicate with the object in that network and that is where the identity and access management come into the picture the new version of cssp has given more importance to the domain 5 and that is why when you preparing for cssp exam you should give attention to domain 5 also on the left side you can see this domain 5 is a very exam scoring matrix it mean you can able to get more and more score from a domain 5 but the question is that in domain 5 identity access management what are the important areas you have to focus domain 5 start with the first i triple a identification authentication and authorization example you went to airport and you want to take a flight from trivandrum to delhi or kerala to delhi so he said hey my name is prab and i'm traveling from trivandrum to delhi so they will see my name in the list that is identification then the second part is called as an authentication yes we can see your name in the passenger list can you prove something which you are prob yes i'm going to validate my identity with the help of something i have which is a passport aadhar card that is called authentication yes sir we have confirm you are a prob nayar this is the seat number 37 that is a authorization when i'm authorized to access a particular seat in the plane make sure i'm taking the right plane and i'm collecting the right baggage they doing a tracking that is called as accounting so that is how the i triple a is there so this domain is actually start with the identification authentication authorization and accounting the second part of this domain you need to have very good understanding about subject and object me as a user is a subject which is a active entity and i'm trying to access the website that is a passive entity so that is called as an object how to coordinate with the subject and object that is basically part of the domain 5 slowly and gradually you also need to understand about the different type of identification in this section they talk about rfid radio frequency identification exam point rfid is one of the fastest way we can able to discover and identify assets in the case of disaster today in a supply chain management we use rfid with our assets and that is how we can able to discover the assets in the case of disaster even for the inventory of assets rfid play a very important role today rfid also used in a man id badges by which we can able to automatically discover the human associated with the details so rfid is one of the fastest way we can discover the assets and that is one of the fastest way to discover the identity one biggest concern with rfid is the privacy issue so you must be familiar with the privacy concern of rfid okay so rfid is one important topic then slowly and gradually we talk about uh, other type of uh, authentication like something you know which is a password something you are biometric and something you have which is called as a token so token is deal with the ownership something you are deal with the biometric body and all that so let me first explain you about the something you have so in something we you have you need to familiar with the concept of look up secret look up secret token in india if you are using icic grid card or debit or credit card the back side of the debit card credit card you can see the grid values so that is a perfect example of the uh, look up secret token 
Then second is out of band token. Out of band token is when you receive a OTP. Third is called as a synchronous token, which is a RSA. An asynchronous token, which is a Google 10 issues passwords. You know, when you receive the, when you are unable to receive the OTP and all that, the Google is providing you the 10 digit codes, 10 passcodes, which you can use only one time. That is the one best example of asynchronous token. Another example of the asynchronous token is your HSBC offer the token pad. So that is called as a different type of uh, something you have. Along with that, we have a two type of token, software based token and hardware based token. Software based you can install in any software or oh, sorry, any, any platform like Microsoft Authenticator is the best example of the software token. RSA also providing a software token that you can install in any smartphone. So once you basically have an understanding of something you have, next we move to the something you are. We talk about the biometric. In biometric, we categorize about false acceptance rate and false rejection rate. False acceptance rate, which is called FAR, is considered as a type 2 error. And FRR is a type 1 error. How to remember that? That's a question. So when you're talking about type 2 and type 1, because these are the two type of errors we have in the biometrics. Okay, if you want to walk 2 km, that is FAR. So type 2 error is FAR. And opposite is basically 1. FRR is all about false rejection rate where the authorized user get rejected by the machine and false acceptance rate is all about where unauthorized user falsely accepted by the machine. So in the data center, my expectation is that FRR should be higher than FAR. I already made one video on biometric. You should refer that. In biometric, we do the one to one template based identification. Because first time when you basically enroll for the fingerprints in mobile, if you notice, it captures every piece of your finger, every angle of your finger, and then stored in a form of template. Next time when you basically place your finger, they scan it and compare again the stored template. And that is how they basically verify the biometric identification. In biometric, we talk about two aspects, physiological and behavioral. Retina, iris, palm scan, these are basically example of physiological and behavioral base. We have a voice base, signature base, keyword pattern, keypad pattern that is basically called as a behavior base. Retina scan the blood vessel, iris basically scan the eyes. So iris is most accurate with acceptance in the organization. Retina basically linked with the PII. So it is not acceptable in the organization, but it is a most accurate. So once you move from biometric, one more important point from the exam perspective is that when you're implementing a biometric in the organization, you need to make sure employees sign your privacy policies because uh, you're basically integrating a biometric with some PII and all that. So it is very important for you to get it the consent from the user or employees. Moving ahead, the next topic in the domain five, we talk about the Kerberos single sign on. Best example is Google. In Google, what happened is you log in with your Google ID and next time when you try to access the doc.google.com, drive.google.com, youtube.google.com or youtube.com, it doesn't ask for any credentials. So authenticate once and access the n number of resources for same domain. SSO, that is called SSO and Kerberos is one of the example of uh, SSO. In Kerberos, you need to have a very good understanding about uh, TGT, KDC, TGS, how they basically consume the ticket, how they basically issue the ticket. If you are confused about this, make sure you should watch my video on SAML in which I have explained about the Kerberos process in a very high level. Okay, one biggest concern with the Kerberos is single point of access and single point of failure. So you need to understand AS, AS providing a ticket, who consuming the ticket, who verifying the ticket. Kerberos using an AES algorithm for the encryption. They offer the authentication, authorization, auditing. Kerberos is a Greek word. It means dog have three heads. So you need to have a very good understanding of Kerberos. Moving ahead, we move talk about the federations. Very, very important topic when you're preparing for CISSP exam. It is not only helpful for the CISSP, but also very important for CCSP. Today, everyone is moving to the federation. Example is you open booking.com. And in the booking.com, you basically uh, opening, uh, when you're opening the booking.com, uh, they're giving you option, login with booking ID or login with your Google ID. When you select login with Google ID, it redirects to Google platform and there you serve your username and password. 
and Google is basically provide the token and this is how the Google ID which is an identity provider okay and booking.com which is a service provider consume the ticket and they basically open an account in the booking.com that is a perfect example of federation it is very important for you to know the SAML they are working it is very important for you to know in SAML what is the exchange which is called assertion identity provider is basically issue the assertion and service provider consume the assertion okay you must watch my SAML video it give you the 99.5 percent clarity about the cssp context and ccsp context about the SAML. along with that SAML is used in the enterprise you must know the SAML working culture you must know about assertion SAML use soap protocol for exchanging the assertion value so you need to have a very good understanding about SAML security assertion markup language along with that you need to have a very good understanding about oauth and open id OAuth deal with the authorization, OpenID deal with the authentication. The thin line difference between SAML use in an enterprise, OAuth and OpenID use in a peer-to-peer -peer applications and it is also used in a mobile applications. Definitely SAML is scalable. Then we move ahead in OpenID one exam point you need to remember is they exchange JWT token, JSON token. As I said, you can refer my video, you get a better clarity or you can refer the Sean Harris book which give you better clarity. Moving ahead, we talk about the IDAS, identity as a services. Nature of the service is a SaaS. Best example is Office 365. It is very important for you to know the difference between the advantage and disadvantage of using the IDAS. Okay, you need to have a very good clarity about the drawbacks of using the IDAS. Moving ahead, we talk about in this domain is different type of access control. Very, very important topic after federation. In this topic, we basically talk about uh, DAC, discretionary user-based access control, NDAC, non-discretionary access control, and MAC, mandatory access control. Along with that, you, so if you take an example of MAC, it's a system-based access, where we have a predefined logic we create in a system, where the access will be given based on a user clearance level and object or sub object sensitivity level. So whenever in the exam talking about object sensitivity or subject clearance, answer is MAC. One of the rigid model we have MAC. Another important thing, so MAC is very important for you to understand from the exam point of view. Another important thing in the, in the domain five, we talk about the role-based access control. You also need to know the different type of RBAC. Don't worry, you can refer my video of access control in which I have cleared all the questions with these topics. Okay, so in this section in RBAC, we talk about non RBAC, full RBAC, hybrid RBAC. It's very important for you to know the use case of this RBAC. Then we talk about the uh, rule based access control. Firewall is the best example of rule based access control. In Outlook, we're creating a rule that is the best example of the rule based access control. Then, slowly and gradually, we talk about also the uh, attribute based access control. Very, very important. There is a dedicated video I create on ABAC. Small hint I can give you when you log into the Netflix, they check your profile and according to that, based on your attribute, they give you the list of web series. So that is based on your interest and all that. So that is a perfect example of the ABAC attribute based access control. There is a coffee shot I made on ABAC. If you type ABAC prub, you will get that video. Then the next part is called as a IM lifecycle where we're talking about provisioning, managing and revocation. So every identity has a life cycle. There's a new topic which is added in the domain five, which talk about the JIT, just in time access. And then I believe that CISSP will test JIT also because JIT is a new topic of uh, new topic of CISSP and it is used with zero trust, where we're creating an account on a temporary basis. If you find this video useful, do share in your network and do subscribe to my YouTube channel. And this is all from my side. Thank you.